Last time we looked at Egan matrix functions that are more global in nature at the top part of the matrix. Now we'll take a look at the performance section of the matrix. Once you have a preset loaded, there are a number of controls that you can use, either using your mouse or using a foot pedal for some of them, or some other external controller, be it the Kenton or a Beat Stepper, or any one of a number of different controllers that you can connect up. This section will allow you to control various parameters of your playing in real time. Most of them are dials, but a few of them are what's called barrels, little graphics that you can assign that give a little more meaning to the control that you're trying to use. On the left, we didn't talk about this last time, but there are a couple system level functions as well. An audio dim function, which works in parallel with the dim that's on the Continue Mini already. So if your Continue Mini is dimmed, this will further dim it. You can hear. If I dim that. There's also a mute function that will mute things entirely. A protect button, which is more for when you're writing presets that will give you some gain protection to avoid a massive outburst of sound if you program something incorrectly into the matrix. And then we have the performance controls themselves. Gain simply allows you to turn up or down the gain. This can be very useful when a pedal is attached to it, obviously. The AES inputs don't apply to the Continue Mini. Perhaps in some later release they'll be repurposed, but for right now this has no effect. The recirculator is important. This basically is your reverb control. The recirculator mix works in conjunction with the recirculator controls at the bottom right. These, depending upon your type of reverb, be it the default digital reverb, modulated delay, swept echo, analog echo, digital echo with low pass filter, or digital echo with high pass filter, you have four controls that can be adjusted individually in conjunction with the recirculator mix. Now, depending upon which reverb you choose, you might have different options. For the digital reverb, there's diffuse, darkness, damping, and decay. For modulated delay, we have a depth and rate of modulation, feedback, and time. For echoes, we have noise, offset, feedback, and time. A few different parameters for each one that you can read in the manual. Now we come to the barrels. These are probably the most important real-time control because every preset can have a different set of these. In effect, every preset in the Continuum or Continuum Mini is a little sound environment, a little soundscape of its own that can be controlled in various ways. And depending on the preset, this one is a panpipe solo, so it has some breath control, body, which is basically a convolution response we'll talk about in a bit, overtone and tone, some other preset might have completely different sets of these barrel controls. And you can see they have different kinds of graphics and notes, slow to fast, oscillator to noise, some kind of filter shape maybe. Doesn't really matter. From the internals, they're all the same. It's a MIDI value that goes from 0 to 127. There are also two gens that are equivalent in function, only they are just dials. So in effect, you have six controls that you can apply to any one of six different parameters or combination of parameters in a preset to do all different kinds of things. We saw before, if you go to the cog wheel, you can select barrel styles, and this will show you all the different barrel styles there are, going from 0 to 127, but they all have a little different graphic that instructs the user of a little different function that might be programmed into the preset. These barrels can be controlled directly from the Continue Mini, or they can be controlled with a foot pedal, as we said, or an external controller. Some of these you will want to tweak in real time to get subtle changes in your sound when you play. Both the gens and the barrels can be set to a name using this editor at the bottom left that'll give you more information on what their function is. And then there's sustain, which is a normal sustain function that would be connected up to a pedal in most situations, but I can manually engage this if I play a note. And then lift the note off. It sustains until I release the sustain. Sostenuto is the normal sostenuto effect where I can hold a note, turn that on, normally with a pedal, the note will sustain, 
and then I can play articulated notes above that on the duotactic continue mini. Sustinato 2 is not really supported by the Continue Mini's pedal interface, but you can use it and engage it manually if you wish. Octave allows you to connect up a pedal, and depending upon what your octave setting is, be it minus two octaves, minus one octave, plus one octave, when that octave pedal is engaged, then your sound will go up or down that amount. There is the normal note. If I engage one octave up, I can engage two octaves up. I can engage one octave down. And these are normally controlled by a pedal. Portamento and the other monophonic switch options are not handled on the Continue Mini, so these just leave off. Round is supported on the Continue Mini, so if a note has no round on it, It will support continuous pitch in either direction. If I set rounding to full, I should get this quantized to the semitone. And you can set it in between if perhaps you're having difficulties on totally continuous pitch and you want to put a little bit of rounding on. On the Continuum Mini, this isn't quite as useful as on the Continuum where you have a much greater flexibility of pitch. Then we have your tuning selection. Normally for the Continuum Mini, you'll be in equal temperament. You can set some just tunings. You can set some custom tunings from that tuning application that we talked about. The end tone tunings don't really apply for the Continuum Mini. And then we have the pedal connections that we talked about before. The second pedal connection is not supported. Only the first pedal on the Continuum Mini is supported, and that only supports nine pedal options. The octave switching, barrels 1, 2, 3, and 4, gain or output level, sustain, sostenuto 1, and advancing through user presets. Now, not all pedals might work well with the Continuum or Continuum Mini, so the recommendation is that you use one of these pedal options. Now, you'll want to use continuous pedals when you control barrels and gens and settings that you want a smooth flow from min to max. For other things, like switching octaves, a pedal that just goes from zero to full-on 127 is a better option. There are a couple options there you can choose from. And Enlipold also has a tri-value pedal available that will allow you to switch up an octave and down an octave using the same pedal. It's set so that when you rock forward, it goes up. When you rock back, it goes down. This can be really useful. Lipold also has instructions available to show you how to wire up your own tri-value pedal if you want to try and do that yourself. You can see on the pedal option here, if I connect up a pedal and engage it, the Egan matrix will automatically detect what kind of pedal it is and give you the right graphic. Here I connected a continuous pedal to barrel number one, and you can see if I engage that pedal, barrel number one moves. Pretty easy use of the pedals. Finally, we come to the matrix part of the Egan matrix. You can see a set of columns and rows, and if you count them, there are over a thousand patch points where you can make assignments using either constants or formulas that you can define. And with this, you can create an astonishing number of different sonic canvases. There are a number of different parts. This is not a video to instruct you how to create presets. There are plenty of those you can find. But let's just go through the basic functions of the Egan matrix for beginning continue mini owners so when you see this come up you're not overly confused. There are sound module and filter destinations. These are the main sound components that you'll use to create presets. You can have up to five DSF oscillators, integrated oscillators, an exposed phase component, a noise from seed component for random generation, a number of different filters, low pass, high pass, band pass, shelving low and high, notch, all pass, single pole, low and high, and a signal multiplier function, which is new to this version of the matrix. Any one of these five modules can be assigned any one of these functions. In addition to these individual components, you have a set of filter and sound banks. These can be a set of bi-quadratic filters of different kinds, one including a formant generator, 
You can have a sign bank, a sign spray bank, and a wave bank that can be defined as a bank of triangles, sawtooth, or square waves. There are harmonic and modal manipulators. You can see here with a harmonic manipulator, a set of predefined instrument impulses have been recorded, and those are used in the generation of these harmands. They can be used to emulate real instruments or create all kinds of variations that might not sound anything like that instrument. There's also a CVC component that will allow you to program your CVC. The last of these three sets of banks, A, B, and C, the C bank can either be set to one of the banks we talked about or it can be set to a number of different delays, a voice delay, a sum delay, a micro delay, which is very useful in creating waveguide synthesis, and and a formula delay. Those are the basic components to generate your sounds. Then you have shape generators. These can be used to create envelopes. They can also be used to create patterns of different sorts and also manipulate phases. Now the sources that we talked about are actually these destination components that can be fed in. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, and C. These can be sent back into the matrix to be modulators for other components that you've already defined or inputs to other components or they can be sent directly to the master output section to the outputs. Before the outputs you can program recirculator functions. You can also program one of the predefined convolution responses that are set up in the matrix as well. You can see a noise component here. This is very useful for random operations or adding noise to any one of your presets. Perhaps you want to make a wind instrument and you want a little bit of a blowing sound. Noise is very useful for that. AES, AES we said is not used. You can manipulate sub-mix components. You can also manipulate delay taps as well. Then there are a set of direct settings where you multiply or add some value to a component that you've already defined. Now the formulas are the most important part of creating your presets. Each one of these allows you to manipulate W, X, Y, and Z components independently that can be put into the matrix to create very complex and subtle changes in a sound. You can also use this ancillary section to create operators that can be applied to different formulas. Multiply, absolute multiply, add, subtract, the minimum, maximum, a lot of different things you can do here. That just scratches the surface of what you can do in the matrix. Believe me, it will take many months to years to really understand the finer points of programming presets. But if that's your interest, I suggest you start looking at some of the videos and most importantly, start experimenting with the matrix itself.